I want to thank you for being here in this moment. For those online, I thank you also for being here prepared. Also takes communion, so make sure you have something ready. So the question I have for you is very simple. Are you overwhelmed? And when you look what's going on in the government, when you look at the gas prices, when you look at things that you may be facing in individual life, uh, issues and things that are coming up, are you overwhelmed? So here's what I want to let you know. I'm praying that you are. What? I'm praying that you are. So pull out your notes, follow along, see what I mean. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5 says this. If you're racing against mere men, because, and that makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on open ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? Overwhelmed. I am not thinking that you are completely overcome. I am not thinking that your mind and your feelings are just undone and you're confused. You don't know what to do. I am not thinking overpowered or crushed by a superior enemy. I am not thinking that you're overwhelmed in that manner. Isaiah 43, 2 says this, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflood you or overflow you. The current will drag you down. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned nor shall the flame scorch you, because God is overwhelming you. The other definition is loaded, filled, addressed with an excess amount of. Do you hear that? That you're loaded, that you're filled, that you're addressed. You have an excess amount of the Holy Spirit in your life. You are overwhelmed in that matter. John chapter 4, verses 21 through 30 says These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all things that I've said. Peace I leave with you. I hope when you read Scripture you actually let it do something to you. Peace. Peace I leave with you peace. If you've got the other overwhelm going on, God is saying peace. You stood up in the boat into the raging storm, peace be still. My peace that I give you, not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, emotions turning and you're just frustrated and over rot and don't know which way to go and there's fear and let it be afraid you have heard me say to you i'm going away and i'm coming back to you and now i've told you before it comes that when it does come to pass you may believe then he says this kind of weird thing i will no longer talk much about with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me So that same phrase, going to the message, I want to reread it and and let, let, let you hear it again. I've told you this ahead of time before it happens, so that when it does happen, the confirmation will deepen our belief in me. I will not be talking much with you more like this, because the chief of the godless world is about to attack. But don't worry, he has nothing on me, no claim on me. Jesus is simply letting us know he's not going to give Satan any words, any ideas, any thoughts, so that he can gain a foothold, he can develop a strategy. When you're under attack, you're feeling the pressure, it's coming in. One of the things you need to do is watch your words. Less is best. All right? What, what usually happens when you're under attack? What's your first word? Oh, here we go again. It always happens this way. Can I get a break? Do you realize that you're giving legal strategy for Satan to not give you a break? To come at you? I mean, think about what you say, because that, that thing, Satan is using that against you to come against you. You're giving him legal grounds. Listen, Lord, this is what they've said. This is what they've given up already. 
So everyone just kind of repeat with me. I'm not going there. Ready? I'm not going there, all right? I'm not going to be letting that happen anymore, all right? Inside your notes. Number one, you need a secure channel. Secure channel. When you're talking, you want to make sure no one else is listening in. You need a secure channel. And there's three things you need to understand. One is you need to be conscious of your words because those words are being used against you. Why? If you're not careful with your words, there's a legal standing and Satan comes against you. Be confident, though, our prayers in the Holy Spirit are private. Are private. Now, when you read the Bible, I don't want you to assume you already got it. You ever read a story, you think, oh, I've read this story, you kind of skip through it, you kind of skim right through it, you kind of go through it because you already think you know what it says. I'm finding out more and more as I read stories that I've read so often, something pops out to me and goes, oh, my gosh. I never saw that. I never understood that before. Don't assume you know that, that you already know what God is going to say to you. Let him speak to you, okay? God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. There's nothing he cannot do. He is omnipresent. There is no place, no place whatsoever that he is not even the furthest planet. God is omniscient. He is all-knowing. He knows the future. He knows the present. He knows the past. He actually lives in all those three time frames at the same time. That blows your mind, okay? God has watchers. And in Daniel chapter 4, 17, it says, Watchers give his decree about God's power over kingdoms and directing him and telling him how they're going to be. These watchers speak it out. Satan has monitors. These monitors are monitoring you all the time and listening to what you're saying, taking notes on what you're saying, looking for legal grounds to hold against you. Now, when you're in a warfare, one of the key things about warfare that you want to do is you want to control the communications. You want to have an advantage. You want to be able to communicate to your group without anyone else knowing what you're saying, but you want to know exactly everything they're saying because that will give you an advantage. So during World War I, what they did is they used pigeons. And pigeon carriers would would fly from one spot to another. They wouldn't stop. They would just fly from two spots. That's how they got messages through. World War II, they they encrypted it. They came up with with, uh, ciphers and different things like that. They use all these smart people to kind of work on it and kind of break the code of the other enemy so that they would know what was being said. All right? That gives you an advantage when you hear where they're going to be, what they're trying to start, and you can be able to counter that. So we need to be careful of our words. Satan's spirits are listening in on you. They're around you. Because Satan's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at once. So he has to use this network of spirits that are collecting data, letting him know what's going on. He listens into sermons. He listens into husbands and wife talks. He listens into meetings. He is always listening to try and figure out, how can I cause trouble, problems, difficulties? How can I attack you? And Satan has often used your own prayers to attack you. Every time I speak on an area, I have found that there is a problem that week. Because it's, it's Satan knows that I'm going to speak about it. So he's doing everything to, to cause there to be a problem, or cause there to be a difficulty for that to occur. So what's the answer? What's the answer? Now, what I'm about to say to you, you may get to me, give me some pushback. So I want to let you know I'm not trying to persuade you about anything, but I'm going to read the Bible. You just listen to the Bible, and then you got the scriptures there. You can go look them up afterwards, all right? 1 Corinthians 14.2. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, you will be talking only to God. Since people won't be able to understand you, you will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysteries. Otherwise, that, that word even translates high things above you. Things that you don't understand where God is understanding. Romans 8, 26 and 27. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, 
We don't know what God wants us to pray for. You ever been there? You don't know what to pray? I mean, it's like, there could be so many different answers. I, I'm not sure what to pray, or I don't know the word enough, and I don't know what to pray. Or you're just confused because your emotions are just eating at you, and you're, you're, you, know, you, you want to pray a certain way, but you know that's not right, and it's like, I don't know what to pray. You ever been there? God has an answer for that, all right? He says, when you get to that place, uh, here's what I want. The Holy Spirit prays for us with groans that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us, believers, in harmony with God's own will. Simply what's going on, the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. All right? God the Father, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit prays through you, and the principle is, because of free will, there has to be someone on earth to release God to move. So you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Well, you know what it is, but you're, you're letting him speak to you. Back to the Father, a perfect prayer. There's no wrong motives, there's nothing. This is part of God speaking to you, back to him. You know what else the Holy Spirit will do? He'll pray things you wouldn't dare pray. He'll understand things you don't understand. He's going to begin to speak and begin to pray and ask that that's released in your life. Acts 2, 4. All were filled with the Spirit. And as they, they would begin to speak, as the Spirit gave them utterance, as the Spirit enabled them. Let me explain that enabling. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, was he able to walk on water? No. But when Jesus said, if it's you, tell me to come, he said, then come. The Holy Spirit, God, enabled his legs to walk on water. God will enable you to speak in another language. He will cause that to happen, all right? He will empower you. He'll give voice to that as God gives utterance. You allow the Holy Spirit to use your tongue as you speak out. If you're silent, nothing happens. Nothing occurs. Paul told us of the rapture, and we believe in that. Paul told us about the fruits of the Spirit. We believe in that. We teach in that. Paul also told us about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We talk about that. We share about that. Now I'm reading what he is saying about tongues but as it's written by him in the Bible. Yet people will push back. Don't understand this. I don't think I want it. God in a box, like last week. I doubt it. I'm not sure I, I, I get this. Is that the way God will work? And oftentimes, many of us have been trained not to believe that the Holy Spirit will work in ways that we don't understand. And so we deny the Holy Spirit the ability to do certain things. Cross the page, number two. Things to know, all right? In this day and time, it's amazing how many things are shared in church that are good, that are helpful, that are good in your marriages and all things, and those are all helpful things, but we don't talk about the Holy Spirit. We don't talk about things that are very important, and we need to get to, back to it. First of all, it's a language. It's used in multiple ways between you and God. When you're just overwhelmed and you just feel God's presence and you just want to love him, you just like, I just don't even know how to say it. I don't even have the words to say it. You just begin to speak, and the Holy Spirit is just praising and he's just exalting and just loving, and you feel like, okay, I've recognized who you are. Maybe there's a time that you, you're, you don't know what to pray, and you just start praying, and the Holy Spirit is praying for you. There are times you need revelation, and you're praying, and the Spirit, I need to understand. All of a sudden, you start getting understanding. You, something comes to you throughout the day because you've been praying in the Spirit. And it reveals these things to you so that you can understand it. You can't learn this language. It's not like Spanish. I, I go buy the course. I go study it. And I practice the words. And I can speak it. It's an unknown a tongue. But a child can have this happen to him. Terry and I were on a mission trip when we were very first in ministry. And, and we were down in Baja, Mexico. And we were at church and doing a revival all week long. 
and Terry really wanted to see something happen with the kids. So one day we just had them come in. We just laid hands to pray on them. The Spirit of God fell upon them. We did nothing. The Spirit of God just fell upon them. And two-year-old, four-year-old, just a whole group began to speak in tongues, began to speak in a different language. And it wasn't Spanish. It was, it, it was very clear what was going on because of what, how God was touching them and the tears and, and the power of God that was upon them. Even a child can see this happen. Scripture says any born-again follower can speak in tongues. But when you speak in tongues and you speak in a language, it can flow so easily. You begin, is this me? Is, is this God? You can get so confused because we want to understand everything. Sometimes we just got to trust in what God is saying. And the language is untranslatable. You can't say, oh, that word is always going to mean cat. That word's always going to mean this. But God gives interpretation. If you know anything about uh, deaf ministry and working with people that are deaf, their sign language is not exact English. They developed that in the last few years because of schools because they, they couldn't write sentences like that. But mainly, sign language are pictures. And that picture gives you an idea. And you put the pictures together, it gives an impression and an idea. So there can be an interpretation for what's gone. The key thing is, when you're overwhelmed, when you don't know what to do, you can pray in tongues. And something happens because... Before, you're trying to think about, how do I pray it right? Your mind's trying to engage. It's trying to figure this all out. Your emotions are just beating you up and coming against you. But you can speak in tongues. And as you're speaking in that, you feel a release. You feel a peace because you know God is praying for you. And you're free. For those who have received the Holy Spirit, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be confused by it. Utilize it. You should be doing this every single day because there's power. You're letting God pray for you things you wouldn't dare for. Jude, one chapter, verse 20. But you, dear friends, must build each other up with the most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. When you're overwhelmed, you can speak in the power of the Holy Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to pray for you. Ephesians 5.19. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. God wants you to be overwhelmed by his presence, singing praise and hymns. With what? What does it say next? What's it say there? Spiritual songs. That's, that's singing in the spirit. Among yourselves. And make music to the Lord in your hearts. Paul said this in Corinthians, I pray with my spirit, but I also pray with my mind. I sing praise with my spirit, but I also sing with my mind. I believe this is what was happening with Paul and Silas. When they were taken and uh, uh, beaten up, and then they were whipped, and then they were thrown into chains, they were put into blocks, they were taken into the inner sanctum of the prison, they were all locked down, and they began to sing praises. I don't think they were singing Amazing Grace. It hadn't been written yet, so I know they weren't singing that. But it's not like this hymn. It's like, I just think they start, God, we just love you. God, we know that you were in charge. And as they began to sing in the spirit, and the power was so strong, it shook that building. It caused an earthquake. It broke open all the doors. It kicked off all the handcuffs. It's the power of the spirit. The power of God released. God wants to release a sound. He wants to give you a song. A spiritual song. If you don't know this, God can't do this. That's why in this day of Pentecost, I'm talking about it. The vision of the church in these days. God's people need to look at the scripture, need to understand it, and then they need to plug into the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit is becoming. To become a powerful church that shakes communities, that shakes states, that shakes nations with a sound of God. So, here's what I'm asking you to think about. When you pray, pray out loud. But Randy, you said I need to be confident. Pray out loud to the Satan monitors, but pray the Bible. Pray what the Bible is saying in that moment. 
Lord, build this up with the most powerful faith, Lord God. Lord, as we're sp- singing a spiritual song to you, let your spirit be released in this moment. Lord, it says that when I worship you, you will cause all those other spirits to flee. And as you're speaking out, they're hearing that, and what are they going to want to do? They don't want to hang around that. They're leaving, okay? You want the enemy to flee. And when you're in a crisis, you pray in tongues. Now, I shared I was taken hostage. And I had six inmates around me, each of them in there for multiple murders. Each of them high up in a gang, well-known gang. And when they spoke, they expected somebody to do what they said. Here I am in the middle of the chow hall, no one around, all the doors locked, all the inmates from T-tiers looking down on us. They have encircled me. They all have weapons. And I've been taken hostage. And my mind is thinking, okay, what are we going to do? Where are the deputy position? How many stab wounds can I take? Which, where am I going to take them so I can still operate? I'm thinking all this. My mind is like being, I'm just, the emotions are flooding me. And I just said, Lord, I need you. And I just began to speak in tongues. And the Holy Spirit gave me peace, gave me clarity. And some I'm sitting there, the Holy Spirit just whispered and says, see that one right there? Yeah. Tell him to go stand against the wall. Why is he going to listen? And then he shared, shared me why. And so I turned and said, you know what happened the other day and this and this and this? You go stand against the wall right now. He did. And the Spirit just get, get, began to give me a revelation about every situation and every person of what to do. And they responded. That's what God wants to do. In those situations, he wants to show his authority. Now, in the Bible, Paul writes, 1 Corinthians 14, I speak in tongues more than you do. 2 Corinthians says, because I can be overwhelmed. You read about 2 Corinthians 11, 30, 23 through 22, it's about him being beaten, about stones being hurled at his body and breaking him. Uh, it's being shipwrecked and being whipped, being left for dead. He says, I had some overwhelming problems and challenges. In the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes 4, 1 says, there's no comforter. There's no one to comfort. And there's evil everywhere. In the New Testament, Jesus says, I'm sending you a comforter. I'm sending you right now. You set yourself stuff down for just a second. and You need to know we're going to do communion right now. And the communion's right there in front of you. And it's an open table. Everyone's invited to be a part of that. It's a time of examination. Just go ahead and pick up the cup, turn it upside down, and you peel off the bottom, and that's where the bread is. And I want you to take it and hold it in your hand. Father, you knew we'd be overwhelmed. You knew that sickness would come. You knew that relational problems would happen. You know that there'd be hurts and there'd be unforgiveness in our hearts and there would be things that would confuse us and there would be things that would just so overwhelm us and there would be fears that we would have as we're trying to figure out what you're going to do with the prices. And is, if we're just thinking about the things, Lord, it can be so fearful and overwhelming. But, Lord, you said you came to meet all our Your body was broken so we could have healing. So, Lord, I trust in you. I believe in you. And as I take this bread, I believe you are beginning to meet all my needs. Go ahead and take it. Turn the cup over. Take off the lid. And that will open up the joint. Lord Jesus, this represents your blood, which is a covenant. It's a blood agreement between Jesus and God that extends to us, that we receive the benefits of it. And because of that blood covenant, you said that you would make everything available to us, and the Holy Spirit is here to guide us. The Holy Spirit is here to empower us. That you are here to overwhelm us with all that you can give to us in this moment. So Lord, fill us. And Lord, forgive us where we are doubting you, where we're angry with you, where we're not listening to you, where we're disobedient to you, God. 
You need to wash over it. You need to consecrate this temple for the Holy Spirit to come in. You need to forgive us. You need to cleanse us. You need to come in with power right now. Sanctify us. In your name, amen. On the back. I send the comforter to overwhelm you, to fill you, to come. The Holy Spirit is important in the life of Jesus. Jesus doesn't start his ministry until the Father comes to him and the Holy Spirit and fills him. Matthew 3, 11, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Take note of that. Acts 10, 38, Jesus anointed by the Holy Spirit. Luke 4, 1, he's led by the Spirit to the wilderness. 1 Corinthians 14, 4, he's strengthened in his personally because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an important part of Jesus' life. It should be an important part of our life. Number two, Jesus submits to the Holy Spirit. He wouldn't do anything unless the Holy Spirit had told him what was to do. My question to us, what are we doing? Why would we make decisions without letting the Holy Spirit guide us and direct us? Why would we live our lives without? Why do we have church when it just, it's just on self-help things and we're not doing anything to allow the Spirit, the power of God, to do something in our life? We got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to the power of Christ, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. God said, you'll do great things. You'll do greater things than me. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. And then in Acts 1, 1 through 2, until the day taken up, at the very day he was exalted and taken up, he was gave commands through the Holy Spirit. We need to be thirsty. John 7, 37, let everyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes, rivers of living water are going to pour. The Holy Spirit will just pour up and bubble up inside of you and pour out of you, okay? But you've got to want it. You've got to desire it. You've got to seek it. Then Peter explains that when Jesus was exalted, at the end, after the four, after being raised from, from the dead, and then spending the time with everybody, and then being taken to heaven to sit at the right hand with Jesus, after being exalted, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 through 3. When exalted, he sent the Spirit. John 7 through 9. Jesus again, he sent the Spirit. This points to the fact that we can be overwhelmed, we can be crushed, we can have things come against us, but we need to remember the Holy Spirit is our comforter. And he is loading you. He is filling you. He has addressed you to have an excessive amount of who he is. So you have wisdom and revelation, and you know how to deal with it. You can be a warrior. Acts 2, 32 through 3, God raised Jesus to life, exalted him, raised him to sit at his right hand, and then the promised Holy Spirit was poured out so that we can say, I've seen it. I've heard about it. It was talked about. The Holy Spirit is our earthly advocate. Jesus is in heaven, and he's our advocate, and he's, he's pleading our case. But the Holy Spirit is here on earth with you. He's standing beside you. He's pleading for you. He's advocating. You're not an orphan. You're not abandoned, according to John. Jesus has sent his Holy Spirit to care for you, to be close, to instruct you, to give prayer that you can pray through in a special language, to reveal hidden things, to administer the Father's and the Son's will. They have to make sure that it's carried out in your life. It brings us to the gateway of the supernatural. In fact, it says in Hebrews 6, 4 through 5, who once enlightened, tasted heavenly gifts, became companions of the Holy Spirit, tasted God's good word and the powers of the coming age. That means the world to come. The Holy Spirit is at the gates of even that. He's so powerful He's even going to usher in the next times. And, you, we need, and why would we not take note of that? Why would we dismiss that? Why would we, we not have anything to do it? Because we don't know its value. We don't know its weight. Why would we turn away from that? Because we don't know the price tag of what we will lose, what will be taken from us. We need to get serious. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we and ourselves just don't have the ability. Romans 8, 26 through 27. The Spirit helps us in our weakness because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes with 
with unspoken this this infirmity, this sickness that he's talking about is this natural weakness that you have, this natural desire to lose your temper, this natural desire to do things that are harmful and stuff like that. He says, I've come to help you with that disability. We're not smart enough to pray about what we don't know about. The Holy Spirit does. He makes intercession. So worship team comes. There are seven things to receive the Holy Spirit. Will you stand with me? Just leave your stuff down and just Close your eyes for a second. Step one is we just repent. God, right now, we just, we ask you to forgive us for those who have not forgiven, who have held unforgiveness. Lord, there's habits and things in our life that we're mocking you and we're just continuing. We're not letting you have power over us. God, there's doubts, there's fears. We're trying to figure it out on our own. We're not living in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, forgive us for our fears. Forgive us for our our responses. Forgive us for our hearts that are not connected to you. God, just forgive us right now. And then, Lord, we're promising to get baptized in water and to do that because that's that's an important thing, but we don't need to do it this second. And then be thirsty. Lord, I believe that you'll cause a river to come. I'm thirsty for more. I, I'm tired of the same old stuff. I'm tired of this, this kind of going by. I'm tired of this lack of power and authority. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for what's real, what's authentic, what will make change. Come, Lord. Come, Jesus. Say that to him right now. Come, Jesus. Everyone out loud, say it. Come, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, we ask you right now, Luke says, to ask and it will be given. Lord, we ask for the Holy Spirit. You said if fathers know how to give fish and things like that, how much the Holy Spirit will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, the power of that. He said, ask and seek and you would give it to us. Lord, we're asking so we know you're going to give it. There's nothing you hold back. You desire to it. We receive it now. We drink of it now. We take it now. Just feel his presence right now. Just sense him right now. His love, his passion for you right now. His care for you right now. Just sense his love for you right now. Just pouring out you can feel the presence of the holy spirit coming and he's here with you now yield to him holy spirit this body is your body i give it to you i i I let you be in charge i let you direct me i let you lead me right now and lord i just speak out now out loud it says out of the abundance of your heart you'll speak And Lord, as you fill me with your spirit out of abundance, I will begin to speak with the spirit right now. And so, Lord God, I no longer want religion. I am thirsty for you, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will come. I'm receiving the spirit right now. Let us begin to speak praise to God. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we magnify you. Just engage in him right now. This is for God. It's not for anyone else. Lord, we recognize who you are. We give you praise. We give you honor. Lord, we love you right now. Lord, we exalt you right now. In your name, Lord God, we exalt you. And Lord, we just begin to praise him right now. Begin to sing in the spirit, those that have the language. Begin to praise him out loud. Lord, we just... We just don't stop, Lord. I just praise you. I just exalt you. I just recognize you. I press in. I am so thirsty, Lord God. I'm so thirsty. Lord, I want that presence and that power that Paul sang about. Lord, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of the problem, Lord, there was a presence. There was a power that came through. There was was a release that didn't overwhelm me, that caused me to break through in that moment. Right now, Lord, we praise you. We exalt you. And Paul in Acts 19, 2 says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit? They said no. Then Paul laid hands on them, and the Holy Spirit came. And they began to speak in languages and prophesy. For Lord, we just lift our hands, and we want to receive from you. 
We want to receive from you right now. Come with your power and your authority. Come, Lord Jesus, right now. We just praise you and exalt you. Begin to speak in tongues. Begin to exalt him. Those that are here, just sense his presence. Open your mouth. And just allow God to speak to you. If you want to receive the Spirit, just lift your hand. Lift your hand and wave it so I can see that. Yes, okay. Anyone else that says yes, okay. Just keep doing that. You keep praying in the Spirit. You keep praying to God. You keep praising Him. You keep exalting Him. 